Hey there everyone, welcome to my third week, weekly live session. Um, I'm still waiting for Instagram to let everybody know that I'm here. Hey there, thanks for joining. And I just learned this like new little wave button. Yeah, you, I've done this a while. You think I would know by now, but I don't. Hey there, so thanks for joining. Um, as you guys get on and I get more people on, I wanna go ahead and just first talk about um, the holidays coming up because there's so much going on right now. It's just gonna be like crazy. Um, I'm just curious, do you guys have, have you guys already started your holiday decorating? Who has their tree up? I don't. So we had actually planned to get our tree up um, the day after Thanksgiving which is sort of a, a tradition that I had when I was growing up, my parents and I, and of course my brothers, we had all do the Christmas tree the day after Thanksgiving. It was just the thing that we did and we'd start all the decorating for Christmas. Well, if you guys tuned in to last week's live, then you know that my entire family came down sick for Thanksgiving. We canceled our Thanksgiving. Um, fortunately, we were well enough to do a little bit of Christmas celebrating. You started on Halloween night. That's crazy. What about what about Thanksgiving? Did you skip over Thanksgiving? Because that tends to happen, I think, a lot, like in stores. I notice when I go in, you'll see Halloween, a little bit of Thanksgiving, and then it's like massive Christmas already. And I always think, what about Thanksgiving? Um, because we do enjoy having a Thanksgiving in our house. And like I said, we just missed it this year due to illness, but that's okay because on Saturday we did start the Christmas celebrations. Um, my daughter and her family was in from New Mexico um, and we were all able to go to the Christmas farm, um, which is basically by day it's a Christmas farm and by night it's completely lit up. There was like an entire stretch of like little cottages all decked out where the kids could do cookie decorating, uh, Canadian Thanksgiving has already passed. Oh, so you get to skip right over. Okay, that makes sense why you started right after Halloween. Okay, I get it now. Um, but so at the farm, you know, there's lots of yummy food, there's a Ferris wheel, there's a train. So that's kind of how we kicked off our Christmas celebrating. And I'm hoping this weekend to get the tree up and take lots of pictures and videos of my son decorating because that's one of my favorite parts. Um, the other thing that I wanted to ask you guys is, I wonder how many of you guys have ever crocheted or knitted a tree skirt? And the reason I'm asking this is because this has been on my design bucket list for a really, really long time. Sorry, my cat might be joining us here, just, just so you're aware, she might jump on me. Um, it's been on my designer uh, bucket list for a really long time and I just never seem to get to it, and I really wish that I could. Um, so if you guys have done one, I would love some ideas. It is on my goal to finally do one next year, but we'll just see how it goes because I am already jam-packed. Yes, Haley, she wants to just pop in and say hi. Here she is, okay. So anyway, so that was um, all the personal stuff that's going on for this last week, just you know, getting ready for the holidays. Um, and the work's in progress. I'm going to give you some updates on all the projects that I've been working on. So if you were here last week, you got to see the two pieces of this here. Now these are spring projects. I am trying to get ahead. Uh, usually what I do is I'll do one project, I completely finish it, get it into testing, and then I move on to the next project. But I have a lot of deadlines next year and I have a lot of projects that I have to do. So I've learned that I'm gonna kind of have to overlap them a little bit to make sure that there's no lag time and I can get everything completed on time. So this is project number one. And I think last time I showed it to you, it was two separate pieces. Believe it or not, it is one piece now. Um, I have, let's see, let me figure out if I can get it in the right direction for you guys. Yeah, it was in the right direction. Okay. So this is the neck piece right here. I've got the shoulders seamed in. I've left the arm pieces and I have the sides seamed in. I have left it so far where the ends are loose. And the reason is, is that the model that is going to be wearing this is my daughter. And she is going to be here, sorry, I have to keep putting the cat down. She is gonna be here later today to put this on. And what I like to do before I finalize the design, I do like to put it on, um, I do like to put it on um, my model first because when I design something, the design is in my head and I'm not an artist, so sketches for me definitely don't work. Um, but oftentimes the design changes once I put it on the model because I really wanna make sure, hey, do the shoulders look the way that I wanted it to look? Do the sides look the way I want it to look? Does it have the length I want it to have? 
Um, and if not, then I want to be able to undo these seams and redo the project as I need to. So I will be testing it on her tonight. And if it looks the way I want it to, I'll go ahead, tie it in, and I'll start putting on the trim. Um, if I didn't tell you guys last time, the yarn that I'm using for this is Karen Sipley Soft in Bone. All right, so that was our first project. And I think I've talked about this one a couple times. This is a duster for spring that I'm also making. This is a really super long piece at this point. This is the piece that's going to go on the back. So let me see if I can share this with you guys. You can kind of see that. So it's gonna go down. At this point, it's gonna go down almost to the ankles. Hopefully you guys can see that, but this is a really, really super long piece. And when I had originally designed this duster pattern, I had wanted to design it as um, I wanted to design it as one piece, literally that goes from here all the way around to the other side. But with this particular pattern that I decided to do, I figured out that that's actually not going to be possible. So there's going to be more seaming to this than what I originally wanted. So I'm going to have to make this as the back piece. I'm going to have to make two pieces here and then put them together, um, which is not what I originally had in mind. But unfortunately, that's somehow sometimes that's the way it goes when you are designing things that doesn't always go the way that you planned. But I still think it's going to end up looking beautiful in the end. And I'm actually really, really excited about this. This one I'm also using Karen Simply Soft, but it is in off-white. And uh, the reason I've decided to use these two is because I didn't want to wait to get started. Um, I have ordered, I ordered a bunch of yarn from We Crochet, and I showed you some of it in an unboxing um, last week when my son was here, which was a little crazy because imagine a six-year-old trying to pull yarn out of a box and share it with the world. It was literally everywhere, and I didn't really get a chance to show off each of the yarns and tell you about them. So um, as I do my projects, I'm going to share the yarn with you so that you know what yarn I'm using for that particular project. But these two, I started before I got my yarn order for We Crochet, so they actually came from my yarn stash, which is why they are being done in the, the Karen Simply Soft, which is actually one of my favorite yarns. Um, I did do a yarn review on this many years ago, and what I ended up, I think, saying ultimately is it's one of my favorite yarns. It's super soft. It has this glorious sheen to it. It's easy to work with, only at the time I was getting a ton of knots inside the skein of yarn. So I don't know if you've ever used this yarn before, so be aware of that. Um, I'm usually able to work those knots in somewhere into the project, so it usually doesn't end up being a huge deal, but sometimes it can get really frustrating. So that would be my only downside that I say about Karen Simply Soft. All right, so I have started a third project and I have to be really gingerly with it here. This one was after my Wee Crochet yarn came in, so I'm using two yarns for it. This is Hawthorne Daphne Kettle Dye. And I'm also using, this one is also Hawthorne. These are both fingering weight. So these are for spring, and this is Peach Melba Speckle. Now the Karen Simply Soft that I just showed you is a medium weight. Uh, for this is a fingering weight. Um, I do prefer lighter weights for spring, but spring is one of those interim seasons where you can get away with a little bit thicker weight yarn as well as doing some thinner weight yarns. By the time I get to, to summer, I really only want really lightweight yarns. Um, so I like those transitional pieces in spring where you can use both. So I have two that I'm designing that are gonna be in a medium, and then this is the first one I'm designing that's in the finger weight. Okay, and now I have this all attached here, so bear with me. Hopefully you can see this thing here. This is actually the center of the project. It is a granny square that I have put together and it is blocking. And I left it on the blocking board because I just got this blocking board last night. I ordered it from Amazon a couple days ago. I had Previously, I used to think that these blocking boards were completely unnecessary. I would go down to the hardware store, and I don't know if you've ever seen like, you know, the big ones. They look like these, but they're just plain. And they're, they're big, they're like this size. But they're also really thin. And I went through about three sets of those before I decided, and this was just recently, that I needed to actually invest in a real blocking kit. And I'll tell you why. The big ones, number one, are really hard to store. I told you I went through about three sets. Well, that was because either my six-year-old or my animals would get into them and tear them up. They were really thin, they were flimsy, uh, but they did work 
they, I mean, they work fine. If that's what you have access to, that's totally fine. I don't think that you have to have actual crochet or knitting blocking boards, but I have to say that I am definitely enjoying them. They came in last night. This is one piece and it came in this whole little kit here. It came with a bunch of little pieces. This, these are actually really heavy duty um, pins. That's the other thing I like about this kit. The pins, pins I've been using are just really the straight pins with the little balls on them. And they're a little bit flimsier. These are really thick and heavy duty and they are really holding down this project really well. Uh, that is a fortuitous thing that I did not know when I got this kit. I was just looking for, you know, I was just looking for a blocking kit where I could have it contained. That's really my whole purpose was that this came in a bag that I could put away, keep away from the animals, keep away from the kids. And that was my drawing point. It turns out that I actually really, really love it because not only is it super thick, it came with the great pins, but all these boards, put you can put them together. And if you can see the red lines on them, when you put the boards together, they will make a circle. So if you are a doily crocheter, this would be really super great for you to block any of your circular projects, as well as your square projects like this. Um, now the reason I am blocking the square, this is going to be the centerpiece of what I'm hoping is going to be a spring cardigan. And the only reason I am blocking it at this point is for Instagram photos. Yes, so everything I do in my business, um, I've learned as I became a blogger and a crochet designer, it's much, much, much more than just designing a project and putting it out there. I've had to become um, a business person, a marketing person. I've had to become a photographer. Um, I've had to learn to grow on social media, which is why I'm here because that was something I seriously lacked. Um, if you guys know my whole 30 day challenge story, I was terrified to be in front of the camera. I gave myself this 30 day challenge where I made myself get on and do a live every single day. And that has now blossomed into a longer weekly session, which is what I'm doing here. So there's just so much more involved in being a crocheting designer and a business owner than I had ever ever thought thank you very much I appreciate it I think it will look of course it's gonna look prettier once it's off the board but like I said this did come in last night so it is still blocking so I could not take it off the board for you thank you very much I really appreciate that I do think it is worth it um, it's definitely worth it for my family that's one of the things that about uh, being a blogger and a crochet designer, being able to work from home, I get a lot of access to my family when I need them and when they need me. I can be there to get my son from school. Um, he, if he's sick, I can, I'm always home. Um, it's just been, it's been really great. And I don't know if you guys know any of my background, but I actually, my background is science. I came from um, the research field where I was gone every day. And in fact, I lived in, I lived on the outskirts of Seattle Washington and I would take a train every day to and from work and you guys this was an hour and a half one way by train if I tried to do it by car this is how bad traffic is in Seattle guys it would be a three to four hour one way trip and guys my husband actually did this my husband worked for Boeing at the time and he was driving from our location to the Everett plant and he was driving three hours one way every day it's super crazy uh, we have stepped away from that life I walked away from um, the science field and I am now obviously a crochet designer which like I said has been one of the best decisions that I have ever made so that I can be home for my family with my son and I just love it I love what I do and so that's really super important um, my husband did tell me the other night it's not work if you love it and I said yes it is it's still work but um, it's work that you love and I hope that everybody gets to go to a job every day that they love because I get to and it's really been life-changing for me anyway so now I want to move on and talk to you about all the events and promotions that I have going on right now and of course the first is that we still have the winter wonders blog hop going on yes this is the longest one that we've ever done i don't think we're going to be doing ones this long into the future but this is a 42 day and we are on day 31. these are the sneak a peek booties by and i'm going to botch this guys i never say this right i think it's Ashel Ann, it's H-A-S-E-L. Um, you guys, she is a great designer. She has an awesome YouTube channel, so if you get a chance to check her out, please do that. But this is her free pattern that she's doing today. You can get the PDF uh, links. You got them today already? Yeah, aren't these super cute? I just love these. I really wanna make a pair like in a kind of a Christmassy color so I can wear them around the house this season. Um, 
but yeah, so go, I'm going to put links, everything that I talk about, if there's a link involved, if you have to go somewhere to get it, it will be in the description when I put this video out, which might take a little bit because I learned that the videos are going into an archive on Instagram and I have to go in there and download them and then I will add the links and then post it. So it may take a little bit, but they will be there. Okay. So you'll go to the link. You're going to scroll down to day 31. You will click over because this week is actually being hosted by my colleague, Sarah of Ned and Mimi. So you'll click over there and then you'll scroll down to day 31 and be able to get the coupon code and download this on Ravelry for free. You got your booties too. Yeah, they do look super cozy. I am very excited actually to make these. We have super, super hard floors here. And I think it's because we have a pool and um, we are renting, so this isn't our home at the moment, but we are hoping to maybe to like purchase here in Arizona within the next few years. But the pool, they've made it so that the floors are, I think they're kind of cement, and then they have like a, a really hard tile that goes over them so that when you come in from the pool, you don't mess up your carpet or mess up your wood floors or anything like that. But super, super hard floors. So yes, nice cushiony um, booties will be perfect. And of course with the holidays coming up, I'm, I'm seeing all sorts of like red and pretty colors going on. Anyway, so that's the Winter Wonders Blog Hop. So the other thing I have going on is the You Decide, I Design. And if you guys, if you don't know what this is, I am letting you guys decide one of my 2022 projects. Um, I cannot tell you the unbelievable love I am receiving for this promo that I'm doing. I am getting messages telling me that they love this idea. They are so excited that they get to be a part of the design process. Um, we are on week four. So if you have not seen results for week three, again, the link will be in the description once I get this video out. You can go there, you can check out what the results were for week three and vote on week four. Um, if you want to, uh, just as a perk, you don't have to do it, but if you want to be added to my close friends list here on IG, you can then either send me a, message me like a picture of your vote, take a picture of it, send me your vote, um, make sure you send me your IG handle so I can add you to that list. You can also just share it into your story and make sure you tag me and that's at itching for some stitching. So I'm sure to see it and then I can add you to my close friends list. Okay. So the last thing is, you guys, Friday is my birthday. I am going to be 46 years young, and I had really wanted to do something special for this. I didn't want to do another sale because we were just coming off the Black Friday, Cyber Monday sale, and it just seems like it would just be an extension and doing exactly the same thing, and I don't want to do that. So I had considered doing a big giveaway for you guys this year, but I need some time to plan it, and unfortunately my family came down sick. So I would still love to do something for you guys. I haven't figured out what I'm gonna do or if I'm gonna be able to do it. So if you guys have any quick ideas that I can do to kind of give you a gift on my birthday, and thank you guys for being my friends, my, oh, thank you very much. Oh, uh, thank you so much, I appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for all the birthday wishes. Um, but yeah, if you guys can think of something that I can plan in a matter of today and tomorrow, obviously, because my birthday is on Friday, I would love your ideas. I've got to think of something. Um, and, you know, maybe next year I'll do a big, massive giveaway. Hopefully my family won't get sick. Um, but there you have it. Birthday. If I don't do anything for you guys, just know that I appreciate all of you. And I'm so glad that you guys are all here and you guys are friends and fans. And I love that. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Okay. So last thing today is I want to show you a little bit of hand exercises or actually a little bit more than hand ex exercises. So as crocheters and knitters, cause I know there's a lot of knitters out there and I do knit, I am not great at it. I did start out as a knitter and I then changed into crochet. I found that crochet is really kind of my niche. It's the thing that I really, I, I, I love it. Um, and it's easier for me. And the reason it's easier for me is you guys, I have right-sided weakness, this entire side from my head all the way down to my toes and I'm right-handed. So I struggle a lot with my crochet arm and knitting is much more difficult for me because I have to maneuver two needles and it's very, very difficult on my right arm. Crocheting seems to, seems to not be as bad. However, as crocheters, you are going to end up with cramps. There are problems. There are people out there who have arthritis who suffer from carpal tunnel and things like that. So I do some hand exercises, some neck, exer neck exercises and things that try to keep my arm going as much as I possibly can. Um, it, I do usually have problems every single time I crochet. Thank you so much for the happy birthday. Um, so before I get started and show these 
to you. I want to give you my disclaimer that I am not a doctor. I am not a physician in any way. I have no medical training whatsoever. So please do these exercises at your own risk or please uh, consult a physician before you do them. I do not want anyone getting injured and I certainly don't want to be held responsible for any, for any, any injuries. That being said, these exercises are very low impact and I think that if they're done correctly, you should be okay, but this is just my personal take on it, okay? And these are just things that I do personally. I don't even know the names of these exercises, okay? Um, I, I do I have dubbed some of them certain names, so, but let me stand up for this. So hold on here. I'm gonna bring the camera up so hopefully you guys can still see me. Okay, all right, so hopefully you guys can see this. So the first one that I like to do, and I'm gonna just move this camera just a smidge here. Um, this one is actually for my chest and back. Now, if you are not a very limber person, please do not attempt to do this. This is one I learned. I used to do yoga a long time ago, and I've been telling myself I'm going to get back into it. And I just haven't, but I'm going to. I, I swear it's going to happen. Um, hi there. Hi, Sophia. Thanks for joining, Auntie, today. Um, so what I like to do, because this opens up your chest and your back. Hopefully you guys can see this. I put my hands behind here and I interlace them and then I just sort of twist my hands out and I push down and you can feel this one all the way through your chest and along the muscles of your back here and I like that because as crocheters I don't know about you but I'm often in this position this is me okay maybe I don't go that fast but still so you're all hunched up in the back here and up in here and that really helps open those areas up Okay, um, the other one that I like to do is I then I do, sometimes as I actually, I take it back. You can do this separately, but I sometimes like to do them together. So I'm like this, and then I start to do my neck exercises. So I'll be like, just gently. Now, and also you guys should know, I'm gonna be very slow. Um, I have actually have injured myself right in here. It's not, well, it's not really an injury. Um, I did not do this crocheting. I pulled something or I've pinched a nerve or something right here in the back area. And it's going up my neck and going kind of down this arm. And I actually did this last weekend playing with my son. So I am still able to crochet and, and things like that. But, but these exercises are definitely helping kind of to ease this area. But you might see me kind of like, you know, tweak a little bit. And that's only because of this area right here. So just be very careful when you're doing these. If you feel any pain at all, make sure that you stop, okay? So you're just going to, actually, I'll just stand this way, tilt your head just slightly. And what you're looking for is just a slight pull in the neck right here. And you're gonna go the opposite direction. Now this is where it mostly hurts me. It didn't hurt me this way. And I'm not saying that you would be hurt. It's just that I'm already, I'm already have some pain in this area right here. But as I do this, I can feel that kind of release. So it hurts a little bit at first. But then as I go into it, I can feel the pressure releasing back here. It must be like a big knotted muscle. I don't know if I just picked up my son wrong or what. So it's just basically side to side. And you want to go up and get some stretch in here and then back down. And you want to feel that stretch all along your back here. And then I like to do just a side to side rotation. Again, you're looking for this slight stretch you don't want to overextend yourself and end up hurting yourself you don't want to, this is not a head yank you guys this is just a, a slow firm and once you feel this kind of pull right here come back rotate to the other side okay and you can do this while you're doing the shoulder kind of chest i don't even know what it's called but i like it so i do this and then I'll kind of go and I'll do my head exercises at the same time. Do what you're coordinated enough to do, okay? Don't do anything that's going to hurt you, all right? So that's the, the chest, the back, the neck muscle thing that I do. And then for my hands and wrist, which is where most of my problems do happen, I'm going to start with what, and I do call this the prayer position, okay? So kind of start out like this, almost like you're praying. And then what I like to do is I kind of pull it in up towards the chest and I pull up on these elbows. I hope you guys can see that. I let these elbows come up a little bit just so you're pushing in right here with your hands. And this is not, do not extend your elbows up super high. This is to be very gentle, but very firm. What you're doing is to put some pressure and open up here in the wrist and you can feel it a little on the underside of the wrist here as well. Okay. So just slight push together. Shoulders are elbows slightly up. 
twist it that way too. And this is kind of like a little yoga move. I think this is called, this is actually part of I think the sun salutation where you go into this big whole thing like this. But anyway, it's the first part that I think is really beneficial. Okay, so like this. Okay, and then you can take your hand, all right? And what you wanna do is you wanna, maybe I'll turn it this way, there we go. Take your hand and push gently back. Now, this is not Hulk smashing time, you guys, okay? This is a very gentle but firm push. Again, you're just trying to open up the area right here with just a smidge of pressure, okay? And then you're gonna go back down the other direction. Okay, and you can do this in multiple ways. I've seen people do it on walls. I've seen people do it on chairs. I've seen people just do it on their hand here. They can go like this. Okay, so there are multiple ways to do this. The point is to just be very firm, but very gentle and open up the wrist area here, okay? Once you've done that, you can also, you wanna open up your fingers, same way. So you're gonna do like a little push, pull back, very gently. We are not looking to overextend our fingers, everybody. Just very gently back and forward. And you may even feel like I just felt like my knuckles pop in here and I could just feel some blah, 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 blah. Okay, that tells me that I'm kind of all tensed up in my hands and stuff as I, you know, have been crocheting a lot recently getting these projects done. Okay, so once that's done, I like to do this one here. All right, get my hand in proper position so you can see it. Okay, maybe like that, okay. So just extend your fingers, bring them back in, and then curl it in. This is not making a, you're not doing this, guys. It's just out and then just pull your fingers in, okay? This is a gentle exercise. Out and pull your fingers in, okay? And when I do this, I like to kind of then move into kind of a wrist swirl or rotation to open up that wrist. And you guys, you wanna make sure that you do this both clockwise and counterclockwise, okay? And really open up. I can feel all my wrist bones and everything popping in here. Okay, and then the next things that I do are not usually, they're not exercises, but they do help a lot. Um, and that is, at this point, I will start to kind of rub into my wrist bones. I hope you guys, I'm trying to find an angle that you guys can see this. I'll rub right into my wrist bones just to kind of help alleviate any sort of uh, uh, like pain or anything I might have in here, that the pressure really helps. Also with your hands, I do the same thing with my hands. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I do get a lot of numbness in my hands. And for me, it comes all the way from the shoulder, all the way up this direction. And for me, it mostly affects my uh, pinky and my ring finger. So I'll rub into this area a lot, but I know a lot of people do have problems with their thumb. So make sure you get into the thumb. This is not, like I said, this is not harsh pushing in, you guys. This is a gentle but firm movement. I find that going up helps the most, okay? All right, and then what I like to do is I, call, I like to call this the duck move. I don't know what else to call it. I have no idea if it has like a professional name or not. Um, you know, I'm gonna grab my glasses real quick because I thought I had found the perfect spot today with no sun and here it is peeking in, okay. All right, so this is what I call the duck move. So you're gonna start with your hand like this and bring your thumb in, and then you're going to bend from here all the way down. So you're coming in like a duck bill, okay? So this is really kind of four moves in one. So this would be one, bring your fingers back up, and then you're gonna pull in just at these knuckles here. So you're like this, back up, and then you're going to extend again. You're gonna come down right here, but you're gonna to try to keep your your hand your fingers here flat. So like this. And then you're just gonna kind of turn that into again a full fist, okay? Again, not clinching. Just gently in. And if you want, again, you can start into that wrist rotation. You can do all the wrist exercises all over again. You know, these are super easy, simple exercises that if done correctly, should help alleviate some of the strain and stress on your hands, your wrists, your neck, and your back. Uh, but again, like I said, I am not a medical professional. These are just my personal opinions. These are exercises that I personally use because I do have limited hand strength. Um, I do have issues on the right side of my body with my crocheting hand that involves pain, numbness, weakness, 
cramping and all of that and crochet can definitely flare those conditions up so these are the things that I do to try to keep myself in good shape so that I can continue crocheting the one other thing that I would do that is not an exercise is if you guys have arthritis carpal tunnel any sort of arm issues like I do please 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 use an ergonomic crochet hook um, I did not bring mine out to show share with you today but I have a favorite ergonomic crochet hook um, it really works wonders um, combined with these exercises and of course rest you guys um, I can't tell you how many times I get messages from people complaining that they are slow crocheters they don't like the fact that they crochet slowly and I don't understand who cares if you crochet slowly who cares um, unless you're on like some sort of massive you know time crunch which sometimes I can be but for the most part I try to give myself a lot of time because I need a lot of rest in between my crocheting that's what keeps me going I don't care that I can't crochet as fast as the next person it's not a competition the only person you should be competing with is yourself and that's to do the very best that you can do and if that requires you taking more time if it requires more breaks if it requires hand exercises do those things you guys it doesn't it doesn't have to be a race Anyways, that's all I have to say about that. I do appreciate you guys joining me today. I have not figured out what I'm gonna talk about next week, so if you guys have any ideas, please, please, please leave me some messages um, to IG or here in the comments. I would love to be able to put something together that I know you guys really want to learn about. But that is it for today. Merry, oh, well, we're not there, we're not to Merry Christmas yet, but happy holidays coming up. Happy, happy uh, house decorating or whatever it is that you're gonna do for the holiday, and I will see you next week.